What's going on guys, it's Elias. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, today is time for another C8 Corvette video. So in my research and looking into it, I discovered that there's really is a best bang for your buck build out there for your C8 Corvette. And I wanted to share that with you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you disagree with me. Let me know if there are better cars out there for the money. In my opinion, I don't think there is. I am, however, looking at still at the BMW M2, the Supra, uh, this Corvette, and a few other options. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get into the build. So let's go ahead and build the best bang for your buck Corvette that we can. As you can see, we're already at the Chevrolet website. Let's go ahead and go to performance, the all new Corvette. I think that color looks really good. I believe that's rapid blue. Let's go ahead and build in price and start building the best Corvette for the money. All right, to start off with, we're gonna go ahead and choose Coupe. The convertible itself, while it's a great option for those looking for that convertible experience, and trust me, I do like a good convertible experience. In my S2000, I love putting that top down and enjoying the sun. I think for the best bang for your buck, you're gonna want the coupe, since even with the coupe, you can take that top off. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and look at the trim. So there's three different tr trims. Let's look at some specifics and what you miss out on if you pick one LT. So to summarize the different trim levels and the differences thereof, let's go through each of them individually. So the 1LT is the most basic one. It's going to give you the least amount of interior options. It's also going to have the least amount of tech. I think the biggest problem with the 1LT is the fact that it's not going to bring that very, very nice rear view camera that sits right here. Uh, it's almost essential to have that camera. I'm surprised it's just not included as a standard item because it's almost a safety issue without that camera now in my opinion it's not a really a big deal if you if you can be careful with the way you drive and if you make sure that the back glass is kept clean you can kind of work your way around that using the rear view mirror but i think that's the biggest miss the other things you're going to miss out on the one lt is the heated and ventilated seats as well as the heated steering wheel you're not going to have a heated steering wheel either so if you choose two lt the interior turns black, but you have more color options and you get a lot more tech. So you have the, the back camera like I told you guys about. You also have the front cameras here. So if you look up here, there's two cameras that they're called curbside view. And these cameras are going to help you park. If, you, if you're going to use the car a lot to go shopping, to go park it at Starbucks, you're going to want 2LT. It's going to help you with those parking situations and it'll save your front lip for sure. Now, if you go to 1LT, you'll see those cameras disappear. 3LT, what 3LT gives you is a much more premium interior than the 2LT. We want the best bang for your buck. So we're going to go ahead and pick 1LT, even though I wish the 1LT brought that rear view camera, as I really think it's a safety issue. Alrighty, so since we picked our 1LT, let's go ahead and choose the colors. So there's a lot of different colors to choose from. Let's start with my one of my favorite colors and that's Sebring Orange Tin Coat. This is honestly probably my favorite C8 Corvette color. It really stands out. I had an opportunity to get up close and personal with a Sebring Orange Tin Coat Corvette. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put it down below. Biggest problem with this is that it's a thousand dollar option. In the grand scheme of things, it's not really a big deal. A thousand dollars out of 60 grand, it's, it's not really that much, but we're going for the best bang for your buck. So really any of these premium colors are kind of out of the question. The second really good premium color I think is that rapid blue. I think a ton of people are gonna be getting it in rapid blue. So we got to pick from the free colors. Arctic white's always a good color. I'm gonna go ahead and put the roof on just to get that full view there. Black's a good color as well, but my biggest problem with black is impossible to keep clean and scratch show up a lot so you do have to maintain the paint silver is really good color i think it looks really good it really accentuates all the lines i'm not sure about the ceramic matrix gray i'm not sure very many people are going to buy it. it looks kind of like a light 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 blue if you guys know anything about bmws uh, if you look up blue water metallic that's what it reminds me of it's a very unique color but it's not really my cup of tea 
Now we get to my two favorite colors, the Elkhart Lake Blue Metallic. It's, I think it's one of my favorite Corvette colors overall. I know a lot of C7s were sold in this very, very nice blue here, and it looks amazing. My other favorite color is, of course, Torch Red. You can't go wrong with Torch Red, and I think this is going to be the most popular Corvette color out there since the red really accentuates the lines of this new Corvette. It makes it look more exotic. Some people say it makes it look more like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. I, I don't know if I agree with them, but I think the red is going to be the color to go with for a lot of people. I think a lot of people are going to order it in this color, and you can't really blame them. Before we move on to the interior, I just want to take a nice close look at this beautiful red Corvette. I like it a lot. All right. So moving on to the interior colors and with the 1LT, you're limited to very, very few options. It looks like you have four options, but this option right here is really not really, it's not really an option. It's, it's actually a different seat option. And we'll, we'll get to that in a little when we get to the packages or the interior. For now, we get to choose between these three colors. So you get jet black and everything looks kind of dark and drab and zooming in here. It looks very, very dark in here. Some people like that. Actually, I've, I've been a big fan of that. My biggest problem with black is that I feel like this should be broken up a little bit. If, you know, if everything's going to be all black, maybe this cup holder area should be like a white or a silver or something. Maybe take the silver from here and put it there. That's the only real thing I would do. You're also missing out on this little little nub here. Yeah, you see it there, but it's black. It doesn't contrast with the steering wheel. And the stitching, you know, it's kind of boring. It's kind of a boring color. It's a, it's a good go-to. No one's really going to complain about it. But uh, I think it's a little too drab for my tastes. Next, let's take a look at the sky cool gray color. This is kind of that white here. Let's see what else it changes. It doesn't change this right here, unfortunately. I wish that was kind of white. Maybe they did that for aesthetics, maybe not. But the stitching changed to kind of a grayish white. And yeah, I think this this color is really good looking. I think as long as you keep it clean, this sky cool, cool gray color for the 1LT package is, is going to be a very popular option if, again, you're willing to keep it clean. Now, I've seen these in pre-production Corvettes, and they get dirty pretty quickly, so you're going to have your hands full there. But honestly, the option I'd go for is, the again, the red. So let's take a, a closer look here at the red seats, and they look fantastic. I think red seats on sports cars, I mean, they go together like peanut butter and jelly. That's just really, really good. In addition to that, you get the red stitching all over the place. Just for that reason, I think it's getting it's worth getting that those red seats. I have a feeling the red seats are going to be the most popular seats ordered for the Corvette. We'll see how that goes. But I think the other thing that I really like is the fact that the steering wheel gets that little red notch right there. And again, you're not paying any extra. This is the 1LT. This is included with the bottom end version of the Corvette. You can get this car right here for $60,000 so far. We have not added any options to this yet. And for this, I mean, I'm, you gotta be pretty impressed. This is very high quality interior for really not that much money. So here we're looking at the packages and here's really where the rubber meets the road. If you want the best performance for your buck, you're gonna wanna take a look at that Z51 package. For me, it is a huge deal, more than what even meets the eye. So let's go ahead and choose it. And it gives you the spoiler, it gives you the bigger brakes, and it gives you the performance exhaust, which you can get without the package, but the performance exhaust is like at least $1,000. So it's it's a pretty worthwhile package, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna delve into it a little bit deeper here. So. If you look here, it's gonna give you bigger performance brakes. It's gonna give you a better suspension. So it's gonna give you a, a, a better performing suspension that you can actually adjust. There's adjustability with this. It's gonna give you the performance exhaust. It's gonna give you a better final drive to give you that little bit of extra torque from those gears down low. This is also why that Z51 package is going to give you the 2.8, 2.9 second 0 to 60, and the non Z51 is going to give you 3 or 3.1. I mean, it's also going to give you, like I said, you know, the splitter and the spoiler. The electronic limiters of the differential is a huge deal, in my opinion. That's worth like two grand by itself, in my opinion. You are going to get a regular LSD without the Z51, but the eLSD has a computer that controls not just when it locks, but how it locks and where the power gets sent. And it has yaw control and it has yaw uh, readings and it has G meters in there. It's, 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 I think, one of the best parts 
of the Z51 package. It also comes with these very expensive Pilot Sport 4S tires. By themselves, those are worth a pretty penny. And the heavy duty cooling system. So if you look at the warranty, if you look at the actual manual, uh, I've read the manual, I'll put a link in the description again for that video. I've, I've gone through it in detail. But if you don't have the Z51 package, it explicitly says you should not be taking your Corvette to the track. If you're gonna take your Corvette to the track, you must have Z51 package. So for those of you guys that are going to the track without a Z51 package and something happens to the car, it gets overheated, whatever the case may be, you may not be covered on the warranty. All good to know, and this is why I chose the Z51 package. So let's head on over to the exterior tab. There's a bunch of options here that we can talk about. Starting with, of course, the wheels. So you have the standard, and this is a free one. You can get a blacked out one. The thing I don't like about the blacked out one is that it has kind of a machined lip look, and it's blacked out. It makes it look a little cheap. You got the Trident wheels. You got the silver and the black one. Honestly, I don't really like these wheels at all. If you're gonna get it, I, I, I'd say you get it in this color. This is kind of blacked out with a little bit of chrome left or aluminum left. But in my opinion, the best option is also the, the cheapest option. It leaves you also some budget to actually get aftermarket wheels. A lot of people are gonna get aftermarket wheels, probably a higher offset than these wheels have. I think the offset on these is like 55 or 62, extremely high offsets. And it gives you an opportunity to spend that money on some better aftermarket wheels. Obviously, this is gonna look a lot better with some red painted calipers. You gotta admit that looks really good. Even some yellow, if you wanna do a little, almost it's almost tacky, but it's kinda cool that it's painted yellow. Unfortunately, it costs more money to do that, so you're gonna go ahead and leave it black. It is painted black, so you still get a painted caliper. It's, just, it's the same process to paint it. They're just charging you 600 bucks to put it a different color. I'd rather just go with just the black calipers. They don't look as cool, but I'll take it. Now, the big question, the, the with the Z51 package, you get the option of adding magnetic ride control. It really is an amazing piece of technology that I'm amazed is offered for as little as about two grand. That's what it costs to add this, less than two grand to add this to your Z51 packaged Corvette. Now, if you don't have a Z51 package, you cannot option this, so it's something to note. And it's really cool. I mean, it reads the road every millisecond, not even every second, every millisecond, and it adapts within 10 milliseconds. So it can adapt up to 10 times per second. That's actually really cool. And what this gives you is it get, basically it converts the car into two different cars. So if you put it in comfort mode or touring mode, it really softens everything up. It really absorbs all the bumps. It makes the ride that much more comfortable. I've heard people that have the magnetic ride suspension on their C7 Corvettes or on their Camaros really love them for the fact that it gives you the option of being comfortable when all you want to do is be comfortable. The other side of it is that it gives you performance traction management. So honestly, for 1800 bucks, 1900 bucks, that's an option I would definitely choose, which is a further reason for you to get a Z51 package because without it, you can't get it. Now we head over here to the high wing spoiler. Now a lot of people, well, they used to be all for the high wing option, but after seeing it, especially from the rear, I'm not sure a lot of people actually like the high wing spoiler. Let's go ahead and option it out here. From this side here, it looks really, really good. But if we look at it from the straight on back, so it uses all four posts to mount up to the back of the Corvette. I think there's a design flaw. I really don't like it. I wish it was only two posts. If it was two posts, I think would be an awesome option to have. But it's a four post wing, it looks kind of awkward. I don't really like it, especially from this angle. Some people are gonna get it, some are not. I don't know, for $1,500, for $1,100, it's actually not that expensive. But I'm sure that a lot of aftermarket options are gonna come out for 1,500 bucks, for two grand, for not too much more. So I would leave it off. So looking at the interior tab here, we're getting to the end of the build. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that you should definitely get the infotainment system upgrade. Now, if you know anything about me, you know I don't really care at all about radios. You don't care, I don't care about how the radio sounds. So why am I getting this? It's because of, and it doesn't say this anywhere here, 
but I've confirmed this with the Chevrolet concierge service, which you can actually use at any time. I've confirmed that you do, you also do get the performance data recorder if you order the upgraded infotainment system. And if you're really serious about track driving, if you're serious about getting better and better lap times, it's always good to see how you're driving. And this is gonna show you all kinds of telemetry, all kinds of really awesome features that you really don't really see outside of higher end sports cars. So that's why I say you should option that. Now, if you don't really care about the fast, being the fastest driver, if you don't care about improving your lap times, then you can save some money. I mean, it's 1800 bucks. It's not a little bit of cash, it's a lot. And not get the infotainment system and you don't get the PDR, but then you, know, you may have to rely on getting a GoPro, attaching the GoPro to the OBD2 scanner. It's a little bit inconvenient. And yeah, you can save the money. And for the best performance for your buck, you really don't need it. But if it were me, I know myself and I do have a bunch of GoPros, you know, I do have a YouTube channel, so I have a lot of camera gear, but I, I've dealt with GoPros. They go bad, they, the battery dies, they get detached, you know, it, just different things happens. Something that's built into the car is just so much more convenient. I, I do like that a lot. So I would go ahead and get that. The final option to really talk about here is whether or not to go with a competition sport bucket seats. There's only one color option and it's textile black. So it's actually a textile uh, fabric, it's not leather. So it's got some leather here. Let's take a closer look here. So it's got some leather here. It's got some textile right here. And the reason that they, they use textile is that it actually is grippier than leather. So when you're at the track, you want a grippier seat and it's gonna be leather. Now, I don't know how much lighter this competition seat is versus the GT1 or GT2 seats. It's probably a little bit lighter. I'm not sure. I assume, I, I hope it is. I assume it is. My biggest problem is that there's no color option. So if there was, if there was a red option for this, it would be more enticing to me, but there isn't. And, you know, the final thing I don't, really, I don't really like about it is if I'm paying 1500 bucks for a pair of seats or $2,000, sorry, for a pair of seats, I kind of want them to be a, have a little bit more provisions for uh, a track type seat. And I don't see any provision for a submarine belt right here. So for that reason, and basically that reason alone, I would not get the performance seats. Now, another thing that this gives you is Alcantara steering wheel. So the Alcantara steering wheel, some people like it, some people don't. I'm actually on the camp that doesn't like it. It wears out too quickly. You basically should always wear gloves with these type of steering wheels. They do increase your grip. And again, you lose that little red mark you get that black mark. I think that's a, honestly, that's probably a design flaw. I, I, I really think they should keep the red mark if you pick the competition seats. But you know, maybe we'll see that in the future. I don't know, maybe in the Z06, we'll have that as, a, as an option. We shall see. But yeah, no, I'm not really feeling it. And for $2,000, I can probably get my own seat. I can get an OMP or Sparco seat in red and replace the regular seats, save a bunch of money, save a bunch of weight, get a harness bar in there or get a, a full you know, cage or something and get a harness in there and really enjoy my car, the track being held in place and being super safe. And there you have it, for under $69,000, including destination by the way, so this includes destination, everything in here, for under $69,000, this is gonna be the best performance for your buck right here. It's gonna be, this is gonna be the fastest Corvette you can buy. It's gonna be a lighter weight without all the extra 2LT features. It's gonna have the Z51 package with all the extra cooling. I think this is the best bang for your buck option right here, what we're looking at. All right guys, so that pretty much wraps it up. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know where you think I'm wrong. If you think I should have other options, if you think I really should not get that PDR if it's useless or if I should get something else in terms of performance options. I'm really curious to know what you guys think. Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.